Clark stood at the threshold of the old house, its paint peeling like aged skin, windows staring like vacant eyes. The air was thick with the scent of dust and long-forgotten memories. As he stepped inside, the floorboards groaned under his weight, whispering secrets of the past. The first night, the house was shrouded in a silence so deep it hummed in his ears. Clark tossed in his bed, the unfamiliarity of the room keeping him restless. Just as sleep began to claim him, a faint tapping echoed through the hall. It was rhythmic like hesitant fingers drumming on wood. He rose, heart pounding in the stillness, and followed the sound to the living room. The tapping ceased abruptly as he flicked on the light. Nothing but his own reflection greeted him in the dark windows. In the days that followed, Clark noticed odd occurrences. Doors he was certain he had closed stood ajar. His belongings, a book, a mug, a pen, were never where he left them. One evening, as he sat down to a solitary dinner, the air around him chilled suddenly. Goosebumps prickled his skin as he felt the undeniable sensation of being watched. He glanced around the empty room, half expecting to see someone, but there was only the faint creak of the house settling, like a sigh in the quiet. But it was the shadows that unnerved him most. They seemed to move when he wasn't looking, stretching and shrinking in impossible ways. One shadow in particular caught his eye. It lingered at the corner of his vision, darting away whenever he tried to focus on it. It was humanoid, its edges blurred, as if it were made of smoke. Clark told himself it was just a trick of the light, but unease nestled like a stone in his stomach. The climax of these eerie occurrences came one stormy night. Thunder rumbled like a growling beast, shaking the windows. Clark lay in bed, eyes wide open as the storm raged. A flash of lightning illuminated the room, and for a split second, he saw it. A figure, standing at the foot of his bed, its outline blurred but unmistakably human. He blinked, and it was gone. His heart raced, ears straining in the darkness, but all he could hear was the storm's wrathful symphony and his own ragged breathing. Sleep eluded him that night. As dawn broke, painting the room with gray light, Clark's mind churned with questions. What was this presence in the house? Was it just his imagination, fueled by the stress of the move and the isolation? Or was there something more, something lurking in the shadows of his new home? As the morning light seeped through the curtains, casting long, lazy shadows across the room, Clark's initial fear gave way to a cautious curiosity. He got out of bed, his movements slow and deliberate, as if not to disturb the delicate silence that had settled over the house. The events of the night replayed in his mind, a vivid tapestry of shadows and whispers. He decided to explore the house, room by room, in the stark light of day. The living room with its faded wallpaper and heavy dust-laden curtains felt stagnant, as if the air hadn't been disturbed in years. In the kitchen, the tiles were cold underfoot, the clock on the wall ticking in a steady, monotonous rhythm. Every room he entered felt like intruding into a space that wasn't his, a space that held its breath as he passed through. In the basement, the air grew colder, denser. The light bulb flickered as he descended the creaking steps. The basement was cluttered with boxes and old furniture, each object shrouded in dust and cobwebs. He felt a prickling sensation at the back of his neck, the unmistakable feeling of being watched. He turned quickly, only to find an empty room behind him. That evening, as Clark sat in the dim light of the living room, the sense of being watched returned. The room felt crowded, as if filled with invisible eyes, he heard a soft, almost inaudible sigh, and the temperature seemed to drop several degrees. He shivered, wrapping his arms around himself. Then, the photographs on the mantelpiece caught his attention. 
They were old, sepia-toned images of people he didn't recognize. Their eyes seemed to follow him, expressions frozen in time. As he studied them, a sudden movement in the reflection of the glass frame made him whip around. <gasps> Nothing but an empty room greeted him. That night, Clark was plagued with nightmares. He dreamt of wandering through the house, each room morphing into the next, endless and labyrinthine. Whispered voices called out to him, just out of reach, their words unintelligible. He ran through the corridors, the house seeming to stretch and contort around him, and always, just behind him, he felt the presence of something, not quite seen, but deeply felt. Clark awoke in a cold sweat, his heart racing. The boundary between dream and reality blurred as he lay in the darkness. The house was quiet, but it was a deceptive quiet, heavy with unspoken secrets. He knew then that whatever haunted this house was not just a figment of his imagination. It was real and it was watching him, waiting in the shadows, a silent observer to his growing fear and unease. The following days blurred together for Clark, each marked by a growing sense of dread. His nights were restless, filled with unsettling dreams, and his days were punctuated by strange occurrences that he could no longer ignore. One afternoon, while working at his desk, he heard the faint sound of a melody, distant and haunting. It seemed to come from the walls themselves, a lullaby that was both beautiful and sorrowful. He followed the sound through the house, but it always seemed a step ahead, disappearing as soon as he entered a room. The melody lingered in his mind, a ghostly echo that he couldn't shake off. Then there were the cold spots, areas in the house where the temperature dropped so suddenly that it made his skin prickle. The dining room, the hallway, the small alcove under the stairs, each had its own invisible pocket of cold air, like stepping into an unseen void. One evening, while cooking dinner, Clark felt a sudden chill. The kitchen lights flickered, and for a moment he thought he saw a figure reflected in the window, a woman, her features blurred but her gaze piercing. He spun around but the room was empty. His heart pounded in his chest, the unease now a constant companion. Clark tried to reach out to friends but conversations felt hollow, their words unable to breach the walls of his growing isolation. He mentioned the strange occurrences, but their rational explanations, old house noises, stress, lack of sleep, felt inadequate. It was in the small hours of one sleepless night that Clark experienced the most terrifying encounter yet. Lying in bed, he watched the play of shadows on the ceiling, cast by the moonlight filtering through the curtains. Suddenly the room grew colder, the air thick with anticipation. He felt a pressure at the end of his bed, as if someone had sat down. Paralyzed, he stared into the darkness, and in the gloom, he saw her, the woman from the window sitting there watching him. Her face was sorrowful, her eyes filled with an unspeakable sadness. Clark wanted to speak, to ask who she was, what she wanted, but fear held his voice prisoner. As quickly as she appeared, she vanished, leaving Clark in a room now filled with the lingering touch of her presence. He lay there, heart racing, mind reeling. The next day, Clark wandered through the house. In each room, he felt the weight of unseen eyes upon him. In the following days, Clark's mind became a battlefield of reason and fear. The haunting experiences intensified, each incident more personal, more poignant. He started seeing her more frequently. The woman with the sorrowful eyes appeared in reflections at the corner of a room or in the shadows, always just out of reach. One rainy evening, as Clark sat in the dimly lit living room, a stack of old family albums lay open in front of him. Photos of his childhood, of his mother smiling, her eyes crinkling at the corners. As he flipped through the pages, a photograph fell out. It was a picture of him and his mother, taken on a sunny day in their backyard. He picked it up and as he did, the room grew colder. The familiar figure appeared in the armchair across from him. This time, Clark did not turn away. He looked at her, really looked at her, and saw his mother, 
the lines of age and illness, but also the love and longing in her eyes. Mom? His voice was barely a whisper, a mixture of hope and disbelief. The figure nodded slightly, a gesture filled with a thousand unspoken words. Clark's eyes filled with tears. The realization hit him like a wave. She had passed away. A wave of guilt washed over him. He had been too busy, too consumed with his own life to visit her, to answer her calls. She had been very sick and he hadn't been there for her. Then he realized that the haunting was not meant to scare him, but to reach out to him. His mother's spirit had lingered, seeking closure, seeking him. I'm sorry, Mom. I'm so sorry, Clark's voice broke, the words pouring out of him. I should have been there for you. The room felt warmer, the oppressive air lifting. His mother's ghost reached out, a faint touch that felt like a breeze. It was a gesture of forgiveness, of love that transcended the boundaries of life and death. Clark cried, his tears a mix of grief and relief. He spoke to her, telling her about his life, his regrets, his love. And as he did, the atmosphere of the house changed. The shadows receded, the cold spots dissipated, and the air felt lighter. The next morning, Clark woke up to a house bathed in sunlight. The feeling of being watched, of a presence in the house, was gone. In its place was a sense of peace, of closure. He knew his mother had moved on, her message delivered, her purpose fulfilled. Clark spent that day in a daze reflecting on the experience. He realized that the hauntings were never meant to drive him insane. They were his mother's way of reaching out, of saying goodbye, of mending the unspoken rift between them. From that day on, Clark vowed to cherish the relationships in his life, to never let work and ambition cloud the things that truly mattered. The house, once a place of haunting and fear, became a sanctuary of memories and love. And though his mother's spirit had moved on, Clark knew she would always be with him. In the lullaby that lingered in the air, in the warmth of the sunlit rooms, in the silent strength of his memories. Make sure to like and subscribe for more stories.